<laughs> no, I, I think that you've become uh, one of a few uh, really good visionary comics. I think like you and Dennis Miller and Will Durst are probably on that cutting edge, that uh, Mort Saul, Lenny Bruce type uh, thing. Oh, I appreciate that. There's a handful of others who you haven't heard of because they're even more on the edge and you're never going to hear them. Why, why not? I mean, because there's no venue. Comedy clubs won't book them, and America does not take comedy seriously, social criticism seriously. If you look at even the careers of Mort Saul and Lenny Bruce, you'll notice that one was uh, basically run out of the business, and the other one uh, was killed himself due to lack of work. This is how America supports social criticism. Well, don't you think Mort kind of uh, just got a little too heavy into the Kennedy thing? I mean, I heard him on what I think the last time I heard him was on the Whoopi Goldberg show. God forbid. Uh, but <laughs> how come her time hadn't run out yet? Uh, what well, the hell? Hers has, you know, and Chevy, you know. So who knows who they're going to give? Maybe you'll get the next talk show, and you'll last what about a good two, three months, and and they'll have you off the air for some ungodly reason. Right. But you know, he's he's still just as insightful as he's ever been. Yeah. But it doesn't seem like he's he's working very much. And, and it's really sad, but I'm glad that you're able to get out there and, and to do what you do. I'm just sorry that you're censored in the media. Well, HBO didn't censor me, and i got to give them credit for that. But uh, Mort Saul, there's a great documentary I saw on Mort Saul on PBS. And it seems to be, did you fall over? No, no, I'm here. <laughs> this guy just passed <laughs> out. Just, <laughs> he, uh, there's a great documentary on him, and he seems kind of at peace with himself. And, and, and in a way, I don't want to get too, uh, again, uh, esoteric, but I'm kind of at peace with myself as well. I don't really care anymore. There are venues and there are avenues, but they are not going to be mainstream. But that's why I love public access. That's why uh, England has opened up for me, and HBO was nice enough not to edit anything except due to time constraints. And uh, I think there's a change coming up, man. They can't, you can't put out puerile crap 24 hours because eventually there's going to be chaos in the streets, which there already is. Yeah. Because people are frustrated not having their voice of reason confirmed. And everyone has that voice of reason that goes, this is bull, man. What I'm watching is bull. And yet, the media does not confirm it. So after a while, people get, begin to think they're insane. And that's the bummer about it. But that's why I love non-mainstream stuff, because you actually hear honest emotions. And that's what you won't hear on mainstream TV ever, is honest emotions. Well, I think, you know, the media has sold Why it. am I yelling at you? I'm sorry. I, I don't know. Well, at least you're passionate up. about it. And I'm, I'm, you know, that's always good to see. The guy's going, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell did I do? No, man, I'm a jazz musician. I'm way too laid back to even okay. worry about it. Yeah, yeah, cool. But, I mean, uh, you can see in, in the way, uh, for instance, uh, we've been fed MTV till we're, you know, we're blue in the face. Uh, they're cutting back all the funding for the arts. You know, jazz doesn't get much. Uh, they're cutting for the ballet and for God knows what else. And so, you know, it's I, I hear what you're saying loud and clear. And uh, I'm I, if I wasn't so poor, I'd be at the show tomorrow night. But uh, I'm well, unfortunately too poor to be there. Philip? Yes. You show up. You'll get in the second show if you'd like to come. I'll put you on the door plus one. You can bring one of your layabout jazz friends with you. That would be great, Bill. That would be you great. Will I get a chance to meet you after the second second set? Uh, if you stand by the exit and trip me. No. <laughs> no, man, I'm not going to trip you. <laughs> no, sure, man. I'll be hanging out. Um, Philip plus two will be on the show. Now, since we're on TV, I hope a bunch of y'all don't get the idea to no, call no, yourself I... Philip. Yeah. Of course, he'll have his, his idea. Yeah, How many have... y'all out there are named Philip? <laughs> All right. Uh, Dave, Dave knows me. It's yeah, Philip Marshall. I know this All guy. Right. So. Yeah, he knows me. Come out tomorrow night, second show, 1030. You're in. Man, that's great. And I'm, I can't wait to talk to you. And before, uh, I'll hang up now, but uh, before you get out of there, give me your take on, on two things. Give me your take on uh, the Palestinian peace accord. And uh, what the hell are we doing in Somalia and Haiti? What is that all about? Now they're talking about, I, did you hear the news today about the bomb in Northern Ireland? No. Oh, yeah. Uh, somebody threw a bomb into uh, a shopping uh, complex, a downstairs shopping complex where, like, nobody can escape, killed nine, injured about 50. And we're supposed to send some sort of peace envoy over there to, uh, to try and work this all out between the Catholics and the Protestants, like that's going to happen. Why don't we just have the Crusades all over again? Right. Well, my take on any of the uh, foreign affairs of the U.S. government is uh, at best cynical and completely doubtful. 
that their motives or our motives are anything other than the elite maintaining the status quo. Uh, as far as the Palestinians specifically, uh, you know, they were there, they need their land, and uh, Israel is a satellite of this country. We sell them nuclear weapons, and uh, you can uh, just imagine what kind of deal the Palestinians are going to get. Yeah. <laughs>